Hello there. Nice little exciting morning for me this, uh, today uh, because I have two kind of major passions, food and cinema. There is a thing called food cinema. If you sort of Google it, if you check it out, there are plenty of things. Big Night, Babette's Feast, films that uh, use food and chefery uh, for whatever metaphorical purpose. There's all sorts of very famous food scenes. Monty Python and the uh, Meaning of Life. They're not all nice food scenes. Um, one of my favourite ones, actually, is The Ipcrest File. Doo -doo. Michael Caine, Harry Palmer. And it's quite an important one as well. It was the antithesis of the Bond series. It came out in about 65. It was based on a Len Dayton book. And the whole point of him was that he was supposed to be the opposite of what Bond was. Bond was incredibly glamorous. Uh, ordered room service, ordered the most exotic things, was very comfortable in hotels in Russia and Turkey and whatnot. Harry Palmer was a bit more, he was a working class lad. And curiously, he was also a bit of a dab hand in the kitchen. And it was largely down to Len Dayton, who was a superb cook. He, used to, he was trained in Paris. He, uh, he did about two or three years out there. He was a, a, a wonderful gourmand. He used to do a food cookery uh, he was went for the food writer, in fact, for the Observer for many years, and he used to do these lovely, lovely little comic strips. Uh, and in fact, if you watch the scene where Harry Palmer bakes an omelet, which we're going to do today, uh, you'll actually see his little strips stuck to the walls. It's a little bit of in jokery there, um, and it was just the fact that he was able to cook. Men didn't do that. Real men didn't eat quiche until the book Real Men Did Eat Quiche came out. Before then, it was just, it was not something we did really. There's some of you, despite the presence of a scoffier and stuff like that in, in the big kitchens and the, the image of the guy with a huge mustache, the Trois Gros family with the big hats. Really, it was not something sort of, you know, your man, you know, your Michael Caines of this world did, but he did. And it, it was a real sort of game changer. Uh, and Len Dayton's book, which came out around about the same time, look at that guy, look how cool he is, look how spectacular he, he, he reeks of brute, you know he does. And there he is, cooking away in the kitchen. And the book itself, which I'm going to nick the uh, omelette recipe for, from, is just marvellous. It's got absolutely everything in there. It's written, obviously, because it's written by Len Dayton, it, it reads, you don't have to do a single recipe, it reads beautifully. Uh, very, very funny, very, very sly. Uh, and a, a, just a real passion for food coming out. Uh, but it's lovely. And making meals from films, I think, is, is, is it's, it's ace. Have, have you ever tried the, the Babette's Feast? Feast. People do it. People have these clubs where they make whole banquets from famous films. Uh, and it's quite, it's quite nice. So I'm going to start simply. You might say sort of an omelette. An omelette? A little bit too simple, but it's, uh, these things can be tricky. I'm going to try and do it as, uh, as close to Michael Caine's uh, version as I probably can. So we'll get to slicing here. At the moment, he's, that's the other thing. He uses cookery as a sort of seduction tool, which is not, uh, not the way Sean Connery would have done it. Actually, it, was actually took, it took the Bond series another 20 years before Roger Moore tried the same thing. He baked Stacey Sutton a, a quiche a la cabinet in a view to a kill which looked dreadful, which looked like it had been bought in a shop. I mean, God love Roger Moore, but really. Um, in the Ipcrest file, he's using this to seduce Sue Lyons, who's playing a sort of fellow spy. And of course, it's all very sort of lingering shots over glass rims and all that sort of stuff. He puts a bit of Mozart on, which is quite nice. Can we, can we put some Mozart on? Very sweet. Well done, well done, lovely. Um, and while he's doing that, while he's grilling her about who he's working for, who she's working for and whatnot, he's there sort of happily chopping away and slicing away in, the, in his kitchen with this very, very ready, beautifully prepared uh, plate which he drags out of the fridge and, uh, and gets cooking. Which, again, this didn't really happen in, uh, in British, certainly in British cinemas. Do, 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 do. And I think I'll slightly more finely chop those. So right, interesting, when you actually see the film, he gets everything cut and then prepared on a, on, on a, on a tray, so it's all single, but it's already sort of, he's not 
pulling his hair out, trying to work out what to do. He's trying to, he's, it's all ready made, which is a way of sort of showing that he's a bit tasty in the kitchen. La -da -da. And it is a curious scene really, because of the way it's played, because of the sort of changing times, sorry, the changing ways people do things. It's all, it plays, the way he plays it is quite strange. It's almost quite sinister. As if he'd said, somebody had written, on his script, try and play it as if Sue Lyons is chained to a radiator. <laughs> he's, he's obviously trying to be really nice to me. He has these really strangely menacing line readings. Uh, the film, if you're familiar with it, it starts. The first ever Harry Potter, Harry's Harry Potter, Harry Palmer scene is one where he um, gets up and makes himself a coffee. And that was the big difference. James Bond would climb out of a a lake wearing a wetsuit with a tuxedo underneath it and would blow up a, a heroin refinery. Harry Palmer made a coffee with one of these. With an actual one of these. Look at this. Still works. Still works. That's about a 1973 one. There's this whole lovely ritual of going around this padding around his kitchen, getting the coffee beans, grinding them filling the cafeteria and everything. It's just a lovely sort of almost like a Japanese tea making ritual, but it sort of shows that this is a guy who takes his, uh, his food seriously. And then later on he gets grilled by his, uh, his uh, superior officer in a supermarket, the supermarket, which nobody had ever seen at that point. And he gets chided for uh, spending, I think sixpence extra on a fancy brand. He goes, no, they do have superior taste. Champignons. And again, it's a good time capsule moment when you watch it and you see this, these people who are totally have no idea what's going on because they're walking around a, a supermarket. I think he says at one point, I don't really, don't really like these American shopping methods. But what do we do? Was this just, before 1960, was everything a deli? <laughs> it, would, it would be quite nice, actually. Da, 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 da. Right, taking due care not to savagely cut off the end of one or even two fingers. Chop these fairly, fairly fine, I think, because they're all gonna get fried up. So you want a fairly equal size. What you want is a slightly uneven board so it makes a horrible clanky sound and really upsets the sound people. Like that. Uh, da, 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 da. I think Harry Palmer would have appreciated that, not bad. And then we shall slice up the, some ham. And by ham, I don't mean the stuff that you get in packs that looks like. Ugh. I don't even know what it looks like. There's no point of reference, but it's clearly about 90% water. There's a warning on the sign saying, may contain ham. No, get the good stuff. Da, 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 da. That, I think, is how Mr. Palmer would have uh, got slicing and preparing. Hopefully Mr. Dayton will approve. The next thing to do, and this is very, very important, you have to crack the eggs and you have to do them with one hand. This is a real sort of, how on earth are you doing? In fact, when you watch the film, apparently, the shots of uh, Harry Palmer's hands doing all the cooking were actually Len Dayton's, because Michael Caine apparently couldn't get, couldn't work out how to do this with two hands now. Can I? Sort of. <laughs> Hang on, let's go left. <laughs> do you know what? I think I would have hired Len Dayton to do that for me. There's also, according to the recipe book, there's, the, there's about half a shell full of water. Since I destroyed the shell, about that should do it. And he was very specific about this. You don't beat the egg, you whisk it. You just get it so that the whites are imaginary. But you don't whisk it too hard. There's the one constant worry about making an omelette is that you're going to turn it into a scrambled egg disaster. Scrambled eggs, scrambled minds. Right, at this point, everything is prepped. And so this is the point where Harry would have gone over to the... Uh, to the hob to get his omelette on the go. 
Now the secret to doing a proper Ipcrest file omelette is um, based on a direction of Len Dayton's. He says that the, the filling must be served warm when you put into it. Now, you don't actually, see, I don't know why, you don't actually see um, the final stage of uh, Harry Palmer's omelette, but with that in mind, the important thing to do, I think, is to start doing the filling first and then leave it to one side, which we shall do thus. Ya -da 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 -da. A dab of butter. Excellent. And now some challenging time filling while this melts. Right, now that started sizzling away after, I would say, 60 interminable seconds. We can use the tried and tested way that he's got everything set up on the tray to get it all in. And by all, I think I'll probably leave the ham off a little bit because this, the onions and the peppers will take this a little bit longer to do. And the ham, you don't really want it to brown, you just want it to sort of heat through. Um, plenty of seasoning at this point. And a certain amount of patience required here, because really you want the whole thing to be soft, but you don't want anything to get burned. You don't want anything to start getting black. Dun, 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 dun. So you have to wait there just for a little bit. I would say probably about two, three, four minutes, which of course, uh, is mind-numbingly boring television. So instead, we're going to use trickery. And now, with everything taking on a nice kind of iridescent shine, the onion's starting to go just that little bit more see-through without having taken on any sort of uh, any brown. This, I think, would be a good time to ham it up. Pardon the expression. And again, maybe leave that for another about another two two minutes, something like that. Stirring occasionally. I'm going to tip this into a separate bowl. And crucially, we're not going to wash the pan. We're just going to wipe it clean with a bit of kitchen towel. And with a bit of luck, I'm not going to singe myself and put myself into A&E while I do it. Add more butter. More butter. <laughs> Julia Child said, there's nothing on earth that cannot be improved by the addition of butter. I think she was quite right. I'll take another spoon. And once we've got him sizzling again. Now this is a one-man omelette, but as Harry Palmer says in it, it's just as easy to cook for two as it is for one. You're bubbling away. Do you know what? That might even be a bit too much butter, but c'est la vie. Ready? Uh, getting a good pan is very, very important too. You get these cheapo one pound 20 things. They won't last two, it's a false economy. It won't last two seconds. I know you've got a huge bowl of this stuff, but that's not what you need. What you need basically is just two tablespoons full. Something like that. Or it will uh, it will just burst. Okay. The rest you can just serve as a sort of side garnish. Now, can this be done? And 
fold over the sewer and the edge. Obviously what you want to do is leave a deliberate hole there where the interior mixture can pop out. <laughs> what a klutz. And there you are. Now, here's the interesting part. Obviously you can just tip him onto a plate, but actually, you know what, that will probably be it. Right, now you simply tip him onto a plate, and if you can flip him up at the same time, and disguise, to a certain extent, <laughs> the hole that you've made, and I think Mr. Palmer would probably be quite chuffed with that. Quite a lot of people know that. In fact, as he says to Courtney, played by Sue Lyons, I'm going to cook you the most delicious meal you have ever eaten. I think he was exaggerating. So there you go. It's probably one of the easiest movie meals there is. Harry Palmer's 1965 omelette used in the seduction of Sue Lyons. Failed, in fact. And if you really want to do it properly and go the full Ipcrest file hog, I suggest you have a stiff whiskey with it. Since that's clearly what they were drinking in 1965. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers.